Uh, someone's asking, why don't you stuff a big filter in there like IE or Uni? Um, so there, there's, you know, we, we like to talk about BS and snake oil and, um, you know, theoretically big filters could or do flow more. However, there's an issue. Um, so, so th th this is what happens when, when people kind of isolate one variable. So if you had a flow bench with nothing around it and you, you, you use, you put a, you float a smaller filter and a bigger filter, the bigger filter would flow more. But if you took that bigger filter and you put a tube around it so it was shrouded, then the, the big filter at some point would flow less than the smaller filter. In fact, you could completely block off almost all the flow going into that big intake based on how it's shrouded. So our goal is to use an optimal sized filter and have the optimal amount of shrouding. And when you hear someone talking about huge air filters, then you need to immediately ask, how shrouded is that air filter? It doesn't help to put a huge air filter in a small space and block off all the air going into the filter. So um, we, again, our, this intake has been flow tested against the other options. It flows as much. Um, no one has found the limit of this intake yet. So it could be well over a thousand horsepower or more. Um, but at, at the standard, extremely high power levels that people are running, our smaller filter is flowing as much as the bigger filter options that could be more shrouded. So I'm not going to call anyone out or, or uh, I obviously have opinions on it, but uh, I would just ask, you know, anyone who's talking about big filters to also uh, look at the shrouding as well. That makes sense. Just trying to think of good analogy. <laughs> yep. But, um, Yeah, I mean, exactly. So you could you could have a huge straw, but if it's in a tiny little glass, then it's not going to help you suck anymore. So yeah, you're basically then breathing around the outside perimeter of yeah, of, you know what what little gaps left. So the more you close up that gap, the less air you're going to be able to pull through it. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it stands to reason that if you, you know, if you have an air filter and you wrap it in duct tape, which is the ultimate level of shrouding, no air will flow through. So, you know, you don't need to use duct tape. You can use the side of an air box. And if that gets too close to the filter, air won't be able to go between the air box and the filter media. And that, that creates a restrict. So uh, I've had the, the pleasure of working on an airflow bench in the past. And uh, you can have a, an air filter on a flow bench and it, let's say it's flowing 800 CFM and, and, and it's loud, right? An air, air, air flow bench flowing that much air is, is deafening. So you have to wear hearing protection. But you can walk up to that and you can just start moving your hand close to the air filter. And as your hand comes near the air filter, you can see the flow start dropping. You know, now imagine wrapping an air, carbon fiber air box around that and then flow it again. Uh, so, so, you know, that's why our open tops air boxes flow more than closed tops. And that's why a smaller filter in this location flows more than a big filter because you don't want to shroud it. You don't want to block the, the air's ability to go. In. <clears throat> All right. Um, and, and it's just like, it's, it just bugs me like the, these, the hype that gets created around the biggest filter, you know, it's like, okay, well, there's more to it than that. We need to, we need to think more critically about how the whole system is working. <clears throat> a big filter what's the back to the shrouding it's back to the shroud i mean if, if, if you've got a huge open intake and a huge a, filter you're fine where's yeah. the lower yeah but you know you, you have a filter inside here and if if your filter is pressed up against the bottom of this air box it doesn't matter if the top's open i mean that helps right but you're still shrouded you know 180 degrees of that filter so may, maybe you have the top now and so now it's also shrouded around the sides here. So maybe only the top will be unshrouded. Now, if you put a closed lid on that, you've now shrouded 360 degrees of that filter. So if you can move that filter up and, and leave a couple inches between the bottom of the air box and that filter, the air can move in there and flow freely. But the closer that filter gets to this, at some point, it's just going to be blocked. No air will be able to flow into it. So I'm, I'm trying not to make any real like, discrete statements, but just trying to give you guys the parameters uh, 
you know, and on how to think about it. There's, there's more to it than just cramming a huge filter in a tiny little spot. And, you know, there, there is a very popular intake on the market that people cut holes in. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about it, but um, you, you see a lot of these cars running nines and eights. They have holes in this supposedly high-flowing air box. So you have to ask, why does someone need to cut holes in an air box that's supposed to support 1,000 horsepower? Well, it, because it doesn't. So these holes deshroud the filter and they reduce the pressure drop of the restriction inside the intake. So all, all things to ask about. I mean, I would rather run a filter that's properly designed and engineered as a complete system and not have to modify it. Um, and also be able to think more critically about, you know, um, you know, what actually makes this intake work other than the one, the one variable that people are obsessing about. All right. I probably said way too much about that, but I'll be apologizing about something next. Week. Sure, there'll be some, <laughs> s s something will come up. But hey, I don't know. I, I, you know, I've never heard anyone say that in this industry. I've never heard anyone talk about that. Maybe I missed it on the forums or the groups or something, but I've never heard another company come out and say that. So I think it's important to talk about this stuff openly yeah, so every, that we every, can actually evaluate what really works. Right, and it, it just comes down to everything has to work together. You can, yeah. you can, you can cram big things into little places and... Uh, that may not be the best solution. Everything is a system and everything, you know, there's compromises and, and... yeah, what's up? Uh, then there's also air shrouding helps hold air from the... There's differences in shrouding versus airflow um, and, and yes. air path control. So, so imagine you have 10 variables that determine how well an intake flows. Um, if you maximize any one of those variables, you naturally de-optimize all the other ones. And so a properly designed intake is, is going to have compromises across the board and all these different variables to create the most optimal result. Uh, the amount of heat in the, uh, you know, as I constantly discuss, the amount of heat in the engine compartment is not a substantial factor to determining the intake's performance, especially when the car is moving. So if you, if you shroud over the fact that there is supposedly hot air that isn't there, then you've just created a, a restriction of the filter and lost power over a variable that didn't even matter. To be clear, we're not talking about disregarding the air temps and breathing in hot right. air, um, but there's, there's environments under the hood that may not be you know, necessarily well, uh, and intuitive where you know, the temperatures and whatnot you're dealing with. The underhood temperature is a consideration, which is why our air filter is in a box. Yeah. Ours doesn't just, I think one company just sits in the engine compartment. Yeah, like just sits next to the, the um, you know, So we do, we do take into consider, uh, consideration engine compartment temperatures, but it's not the only consideration. So you, know, you, you have to be careful. The best solution is nuanced in a wide range of variables. Um, if you optimize in just one area, then it's going to be at the great compromise of others. I mean, you could, you could just wrap the air filter in duct tape. That way no hot <laughs> can get into it. I mean, how far do you take, you know, how far yeah. to what extreme do you take it? You know? So, um, the, the fact of the matter is the open top with, with a little bit of space between the hood gives the right amount of shrouding from the heat sources that are there, but optimizes the flow and reduces pressure drop. So it creates the ultimate best result. Yep. There's just not enough room to create a big enough closed box air box. The zero compromise, yeah. In, in the engine compartment. So the other compromise would be you could have the intake come above the hood, then it would be big enough, right? Better than closed. Great question. So you, some, you, I some think people, we need to repeat these questions too, because I don't think they can hear now. Uh, yeah. Um, someone says, if open flows better, why do you offer a closed? So in, in certain countries, there are, there are laws and restrictions that open intakes are not legal. So we, we offer the closed for that. And there are people who like the look of a closed intake better, so they're willing to make the performance compromise to have a closed air box. And some uh, don't want as much noise as you and, get along. And it is quieter, it. yes. So not, every, uh, not everything is based around the, the compromise or optimization of ultimate performance. We do offer an option that, that gives the best ultimate performance, but we do offer another option for, and it still flows a lot better than the stock air box. Right. Well, yeah, so we, had, we do have a customer who ran nines on this intake. Um, could he run faster if he had the open? Possibly, you know, he'd have to 
He just to test back to back. We could send measure, him an open yeah. one, and he can try it. I mean, you know, we're we're, we're I'm talking about in, in general generalizations here. I'm not presenting any data, but generally speaking, you know, we we do we in our testing, the data supports an open intake, um, and you know, this is even on a dyno. We can shut the hood. There's no heat issues. We don't see uh, air temps skyrocketing or the engine ingesting completely hot. Yeah, so we have a we have a, a decent fan set up, so it's you know somewhat representative of some road speed. Yeah, but it would but be it's, it's, it's the not, worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah, it's really be. not. Uh, yeah, you're not going to get 130 mile an hour frontal yeah. airflow on it. Any any additional follows? Okay, cool. <laughs> Great questions, guys. Yeah. And, yeah, thank thank you for letting me speak freely. I'm sure people just some people disagree with what I said. I hope I didn't offend anyone, but um, you know, it, we just have to be able to talk about what's really going on. That, that's that's my my our only intention is just to talk about real talk. You know, hashtag. <laughs>